What's up, everybody? It's Coach Matt over here, Primal Athlete Training Center, www.primalatc.com. Today, I am answering probably one of the most argued and controversial questions among throwers and coaches. But before I do that, I just want to remind you guys, the track and field overnight camp, the three-day camp that is going on at Allegheny College in Western PA is filling up very, very quickly. This is not a sales ploy. This is not a marketing ploy. This is the truth. We are running out of room. So if you are considering going to this camp, you need to sign up quickly. The camp is going to be held in July. It's at Allegheny College right near the Northern Ohio, Western New York, Western PA, Lake Erie area. It's a beautiful spot. You're going to live right on campus along with uh, right next to, to, the, to the track, basically. And we have three of the best area coaches uh, just with phenomenal resumes. Click the link below. Read all about it. It is worth it for you guys. It's brand new. It's never been done before. And um, you guys get to be part of history, part of the first ever Primal Overnight Camp at Allegheny. So the question we need to answer today, and we're going to try to keep this short, because if I don't try to keep this short, I can go on for days, is the age-old question having to deal with glide shot put versus the rotational shot put. Now, you have a lot of different varying ideas on this. And I treat this question like the people that say that you shouldn't lift when you're younger because it'll stunt your growth. You could find 10, 15, 20, 50, 100 different articles talking about how lifting at a younger age is bad. And you can find the same amount of articles, you know, 30, 40, 50, 100 articles talking about how lifting at a younger age is actually a beneficial thing. You can go back and forth for days arguing this. So rather than try to give my arguments over what's better for what body type or what's better, who's going to throw further, which is the most consistent, blah, blah, blah. What I want to do is just talk to you a little bit about the benefits of each. And you guys can make a decision on your own. So I want to start with Glide. The most beneficial thing about Glide, in my opinion, is that there's not a whole lot of working parts. You can teach the glide to a beginner athlete and have them gliding and have them throwing pretty far within a few months of training. And that's throwing pretty good. Most people can teach a glide in about a week or two with solid fundamentals and solid mechanics. It's just the glide is a simple machine. I've referenced it before as being a seesaw. I've talked about the glide as being just like a, a, a ramp or a catapult. It's a simple machine. The rotational shot put is like the internal combustion engine. There are so many different moving parts. There are so many different little pieces of the rotational shot put. It's like a golf swing. If one thing gets a little bit messed up, if one thing is a little bit off, it's going to throw off everything else. So in my opinion, the glide shot is a little bit easier to teach and is a little bit faster to teach and get really good results than the rotational shot put. Now, at the same time, the rotational shot put does produce a lot more linear force than the glide shot put. And because it produces a lot more linear force, um, you know, if you are able to hit that block, if you are able to hit that vertical push at the end, it will, in essence, the physics of it tell you that it will go further. But again, which one's better? Is having a simpler, easier uh, throw better? Or is having a more complicated throw better because it produces more force? Again, you can go back and forth for days. Now, I like the glide for my beginners. I teach my advanced athletes how to rotate before they go to college uh, so that when they get there, they have a good understanding of what they're doing. Now, with that being said, which one goes farther? And this is the thing that always everyone talks about. Well, the rotational shot is the world record. Randy Barnes, the rotational shot. The guy that held the world record before Randy was Brian Oldfield, the guy who brought the rotational shot to the mainstream. Uh, there's a classic video of someone calling it the discus spin. Uh, so that's, that's kind of sort of where that goes back to. And, you know, the rotational shot does hold the last two world records. But if you look at the glide, the glide won the last two Olympic Games. The glide, I think, has more of a prestige, if you want to call it that, where more gliders have won a lot more, you know, uh, gold medals and a lot more 
world championships and you look at guys like Timmerman and you look at guys from back in like the 70s and 80s, gliding was where it's at. The rotational is kind of new. So again, you can go back and forth. Which one's better, glide or rotational? The other one that we would want to talk about, guys, to wrap this up real quick, is that a lot of people think that if you are short, that you should do the rotational. And if you are tall, then you should be a glider. Well, look at some of the gliders of today. Look at guys like Christian Cantwell. Look at guys like Dan Taylor. These are extremely, extremely tall gentlemen. These guys are big. A lot of people out there, they say they're like 6'2", and they're really like 6 feet. These guys say they're tall, and they are tall. I have pictures with these guys. I'm 6'2", six 6'3", foot six foot when I'm wearing sneakers, and uh, these dudes tower over me. They are big dudes. So if that was your case, these guys should be gliding. But guess what? They rotate, and they're really damn good at rotating. If that was the case, you would have guys like Ryan Whiting, who's extremely tall. Ryan Whiting should be doing a glide. So it doesn't make sense. You guys can argue that height, you know, glide is for tall people and rotation is for short people. A lot of people will go back and forth about that and argue that. But really what it comes down to, guys, is that both of these throwing styles are great. Both of these throwing styles have shown to go very, very far. Both of these throwing styles have won a lot of world championships and a lot of Olympic medals. And both of these throwing styles, when done correctly, produce a ton of power and get the shot out there really, really far. So again, you can argue until you're blue in the face. People that love the rotational are going to take that side and argue it with everything they have. People that like the glide are going to take that side and are going to argue it with everything that they have. And just like cats and dogs are going to go at it and say which one's better, the glide or the rotation. Let me give it to you simply. Some people just do not have that compass in their head where they can rotate. I was somebody who probably should have rotated, but I did the glide. I didn't really have anyone to teach me or show me. It wasn't until after college and after high school where I really sat down and started to learn the mechanics of the rotational shot. And lo and behold, I should have probably done the rotational. Um, you know, it's one of these things where if you have a coach who really understands the rotational, who's able to get a lot out of the rotational, and is not just doing it as a novelty thing, then you should rotate. If you have a coach or if you don't have a coach who's watching you every day, and if your coach really knows the glide well and is not comfortable with the rotation, you should throw with the glide. You should do what you feel the most comfortable with and what you have the most coaching on. If your glide is going 50 feet and your rotational is going 45, I would stick with the glide. Yes, potentially, if you had three years, if you had two years, your rotational will go further than your glide eventually. But if you're a junior or senior in high school and you've been gliding for two or three years, I'd stick with that glide. So, guys, hopefully I've been able to answer some questions on this whole glide versus rotational debate. It's been going on for years. It's going to continue well after I'm long and gone out of this sport and out of this world. So keep the argument going, I guess. Keep the questions coming in. And make sure if you're looking for a kick-ass track camp with some world-renowned coaches, world uh, um, state record holders and Olympic trial uh, competitors and junior Olympic coaches and me, what you guys need to do is click the link below. Come see us in Pennsylvania this summer for a few days. Learn how to launch some massive PRs and take it to your conference and to your state next year. Hope to see you guys soon and keep these questions rolling in.